What's up YouTube and welcome back to a new series I'm going to be doing called how to play CS in under five minutes. Today we're going to be doing how to op window on Mirage and before I get into the video I just want to say the map that I'm using here is refrag.gg. I'll leave a link down in the description and 10 free trial codes for you guys to try out for yourself. And also thanks to sponsors like Boosterland I'm able to push out this daily content. At Boosterland the goal is to level up your base and collect bonus rewards for doing so. Earn boosters from your special buildings within the base or just from upgrading your base using code polo or playing roulette. These boosters give you better odds when you use them, such as the double, that doubles the drop you get from a case, the re-roll that grants you another free spin, and the sell bonus that adds 10% value to whatever skin you're trying to sell. You can also get 6 different types of boosters just from completing the tutorial. Here's an AK Neon Revolution I opened from the $3 Kratos case. Oh! Oh my god- Oh wait, that's still good! Oh sh- Wait, that's actually still good! If you head over to Boosterland right now, you can use code POLO for a free rare booster and 5% off your first deposit. So let's get into it. Your job as an opper on CT side Mirage is essentially going to be to lock down a bomb site or be able to try and find a pick in mid. Now what I mean by that is if you're opping window, if you're opping around con, if you're opping around mid, there's a decent chance you're going to be able to get a pick here because again, these are all long range fights. These are high percentage for the oppers. It's something I've talked about in my how to play at a high level series. And this is an extremely important concept that oppers need to understand. Also, I just want to say if you hear any rumbling in the background, I'm in the middle of a really big storm. So sorry about that. Now, as far as locking down bomb sites go, if you're an opper and you're over towards A or over towards B, there's a pretty high percent chance you're going to get a pick on an execute, and there's a low percent chance you're going to die. Because if I was playing retake on A, I'd be jump spotting ticket, playing somewhere around here, and I'd be playing to run away into CT, right? So the chance that I'm going to be getting a kill on a rifle in a long range fight like this is going to be a lot lower than if I had an op. That's why you'll see oppers play retake on A or over here and just try and pick them on an execute because the percent chance that an opper is going to get a pick on an execute is higher than a rifle. Same thing goes for upper B. Let's say your opper is going to lock down upper B. He posts up. Now the B player doesn't really have to stay here. He can go up cat let's say your ladder guy got into ladder and this b player can actually now play as the cat player and play bait for the t's let's say i'm a t and i'm running up towards cat oh there's a guy towards bricks i'm gonna try and run him down now your ladder guy who's the actual cat player can shoot this guy in the back and that's how you'll see pro teams play bait and switch setup by opping sites it basically gives your riflers a ton of freedom to play with something that they don't normally get in a round where an opper would be starting towards window or starting towards con when have you ever seen an x factor opper be extremely passive and not really say anything and not really communicate to his team where he's going or what setups he wants, right? You will never see a pro team have an impactful opper that isn't calling setups for himself. Now that we got the conceptual stuff out of the way, we can go into the nitty gritty of how to op on this map. You don't really want to be called a chronic window opper. And what I mean by a chronic window opper is if you're going to start in window every round, nade the window smoke and do all this stuff, your teammates are going to be essentially stuck in their positions for the entire half. You're not calling for them. You're not really telling them to move. It's going to be one B player, one cat player, one con player, one A player, and they're going to have to be the ones who are going to decide what the CT setup is. You have the op, you have the best gun on the CT side, you should be telling them what to do. But if you are going to go window, here are some tips. Now, if the T's are smoking fast window, what you'll see them do is they'll generally throw one of these spawns. So now that the T's are going to be swinging out as soon as the fast window smoke pops, because that's the reason you're smoking fast windows, you want to get out mid fast. What oppers will do is they'll line up this nade, it's a right click jump throw. And when the smoke is coming in, they'll try and time the nade for when the smoke will bounce. So they'll aim right here, they'll right click jump throw, and they'll throw it right now. Smoke pops, boom. Now you can hold mid. And again, because the T's are going to be sprinting out mid right when the smoke pops, that's the whole point in throwing it this is generally going to be a free kill on your pugs now let's say a team is throwing the top mid smoke what you can do from window is throw this little lineup where you aim at the top of the plant right here you just release it like that and what this will do is it will nade the entire top mid smoke so you can just post up and kill the t's when they're running out now if you want to op cat because you are playing retake on mid you have to be aware that the t's can be up cat quick but you want to scope deep so the upper b guy doesn't hear you so he doesn't call out to your team that you're opting mid and a place that t's normally go on their t side default is going to be towards chair so you can just op this angle on chair and t's will try and fight this in your pugs because they just say screw it and this is how you can end up punishing them. And how you can punish T's that only smoke fast window is you can throw the smoke bottom con to put out any mollies that the T's will throw, and you can go ahead and peek on top mid. And you want to be doing this when your A player is flashing over connector, something that looks like this. So then when you're peeking, no one can be holding you that's not blind, and this will generally be a free kill in your pugs. Another pretty high percentage pick that you can do in your pugs is you can have a guy start window with you. He'll come over here, jump on his head, and once you come over in towards ladder, you can go ahead and post up on this angle, and because you got here so quick, the T's won't really expect it. So you'll be able to pick him off on the cross that he thinks is is safe just because of this boost. Now a site setup you can do towards A is you can have a guy holding palace over here, you can have a guy holding top con from jungle, and after you molly ramp you walk up and peek behind the molly and you can post on ramp. And from the T side majority of the time this is a pretty safe fight. Why would any CT rifler be here mid round? It's not a good fight for them. The T's are on a headshot angle, they can move, they have cover. This isn't a good fight for rifler. So if you sit here with an op, pretty commonly in your pugs you'll be able to pick off a careless T jiggling this angle or peeking this angle without any worry in the world. But that's going to be it for the video. I just wanted to keep it short and sweet for this series. And if you want to learn any concepts about Mirage, I'll go ahead and and link my how to play mirage at a high level video I also do coaching on my twitch which i'll go ahead and link below thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one